Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Tianan and today I'm bringing you guys a bookshelf tour. This has definitely been a long time coming. I haven't actually posted a bookshelf tour since 2021. It is of course now 2023 and because so much time had passed I did want to sit down now and film this video for you guys so that you can see how my shelves have changed since then. The way I'm going to structure this is I will give you guys a quick little overview of the shelves behind me and then I will focus on each singular bookcase and go through all the shelves with you individually. I would just like to quickly apologise here that some of the clips might be a little shaky. I am going to ask Tom for his help with some of the higher shelves because I do have shelf extenders on here but they are the white billy bookcases from Ikea. I will try and leave the exact ones that I have linked below but these are the only bookshelves that I'm going to show you today. Of course I have my Tolkien one which I have made a video of not too long ago so I will leave that linked up above and down below if you want to check that one out. I might show you guys my little one that's to the side of me here but that just has a few mangas on it and I'm not going to show you the one in my bedroom or downstairs because they tend to have books I'm unsure of on them and they're just kind of communal bookshelves I want to say so that when people come to my house if they want to take a book off there or borrow a book then they can so the main focus today is going to be these shelves behind me and I'm so excited to finally be filming this video so without further ado let's just dive into the tour. It is extremely hard to fit all of the books in frame so I am sorry about that but here is a little overview of my bookshelves. As you can see I do have a few books that are stacked on top of each other which is not ideal but it is is what it is for now and I'm going to start off by focusing on this bookshelf and then we're going to work our way across until we come to the last one here. Once again I will apologise for the shakiness, I am now filming this by myself so apologies for that but starting off here at the top of my first shelf we have my stunning books essentially, all the books that I think are just so beautiful. So over here I have some classics, these three are part of the same collection, if I can find out which collection it is I will have it on screen for you now. Then we have my Mina Lima collection which again are just beautiful, if I could recommend you any from this shelf it would be these, they are just absolutely amazing, the attention to detail in them is phenomenal and I've just taken Alice out quickly so that you can see what it looks like, it is beautiful and inside we have a lot of illustrations, we have some interactive elements as you can see here but everything's fallen out so I am going to pop this one back. Then we have, I think these are Barnes & Noble editions but honestly I'm not too sure but we have another copy of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and then we have The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Next up we we have Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is one of my favourite books ever. It is such a beautifully written book about Shakespeare's son, which I do have a reading vlog for actually. I will pop it up on screen if you want to check it out. Next to that we have the newest edition of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I've wanted my own copy of that book for the longest time and so when this collector's edition came out you guys know I had to buy it. After that one we have my hardcover Agatha Christie books. I'm not sure if there's a name for this collection but some of her stories are being reprinted in these hardcover editions and they are just the most beautiful things. As you can see I have kind of displayed them out for you guys just so that you can get a glimpse of what they're like. These are how the spines look when they are back on my shelves. I am going to be collecting these as and when I can because I just think they are stunning and then next to that we actually have my copy of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier which is here because I can't find a place for it anywhere else. Moving down a shelf we have all of my Agatha Christie books. As you can see I do have quite the collection but it's only going to continue to grow. The first one on the sides here aren't actually written by Agatha Christie, they are the new kind of Poro books written by Sophie Hanna but I keep them there because of the spines which have Hercule Poro on them and of course because they do follow that character as well. If I move this potted plant out of the way which is a fake one from Ikea you can see that I have the Miss Marple short stories which I have no idea when I'm going to read because I don't really like short stories. Then we have the Tommy and Tuppence books which are these five here, you can see the different different emblems on the top of each book. So the Tommy and Tuppence one has kind of two people on them, the Poro ones have the moustache and the Agatha Christie ones have the kind of old woman on there. So my Poro books start here, I do actually have the Mysterious of Ferret Styles which is the first book there but if I go to take this down 
you can see that it's a little bit shorter than the rest of the books in the collection and it doesn't match. So I am going to be buying myself a copy of this one that will match the collection. I have currently read Up to the Murder of Roger Ackroyd in the Poirot books. I've only read By the Pricking of My Thumbs in the Tommy and Tuppers books as well, so I definitely need to read more of those. But I have read The Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, and And Then the Monon, but I read those before I decided to read them in order. Then we have the Miss Marple book, starting with The Murder at the Vicarage, and it goes all all the way along here until Miss Marple's final cases. I recently read all of these books. I kind of made it a mission to read them last year and I'm really happy that I did. They are such good murder mysteries and that is how now I have gone back to start the Poirot books. And then the last couple of books that I have here are the kind of standalone murder mysteries that Agatha Christie wrote. So we have The Pale Horse, Sparkling Cyanide, Ordeal by Innocence, The Unexpected Guest, which has been adapted from the play, and Crooked House as well. As I mentioned, this show will be growing because I love collecting these editions. I think they just look so stunning together. I love how colourful they are. I love that we get little pictures on all the spines as well and of course the kind of symbols at the top. And then moving down we have my thriller slash murder mystery shelf. Once again I'm going to move that potted plant back up there and I'm going to take off my Cassandra Clare mug because this is where I keep my bookmarks as you can see. So here is a quick little look at this shelf. We have the Thursday Murder Club series here by Richard Osman which I still haven't read and I really need to get on that. We then have a few thrillers and murder mysteries here. The Butcher and the Wren is one that I read at the start of this year and really loved so if you want to hear my thoughts on that I will leave my January wrap up in the description box for you guys. Still haven't read Swipe Right for Murder or The Furies. Have read Five Survive which again you can hear my thoughts on in my January wrap up. Then we have the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson which is one of my favourite ever series. It is such a good YA mystery series that honestly has you on the edge of your seat. So I would highly recommend these if you kind of want to get into reading mystery thrillers but you're not quite sure where to start. I am going to be reading Nine Liars this month which I'm so excited for but I have read the first full books and it's safe to say that this is a favourite series of mine. The last few books on here are kind of a bit of a mismatch. We have How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao, which sounds really cool but I just never prioritise it. So I will definitely have to read that soon. Then we have some YA thrillers, which I like to read when I'm feeling a little bit slumpy. I'm not sure if this is a murder mystery or a historical fiction, to be honest with you. It's The Kingdom of Bones by Stephen Gallagher. One that I really want to read though is The Marlow Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. This is one that I've heard amazing things about and the audiobook is on Squib, so I might pick this one up soon. And then closing off this shelf, we have Death in the Stars by Francis Brody, which I believe is just a standard murder mystery book that is part of an extensive series. Moving on down guys, we have the start of my middle grade books and this, as you can see, is where my shelves start to get a little bit messy. Once again, I have another fake potted plant from Ikea, so I'm going to move that out the way. I then have this Beauty and the Beast mug, which I absolutely love because it has all of the books on it and of course the rose. This again houses a lot of my bookmarks. As you can see, I have quite the collection. And then I have a really fitting candle on here, which is Middle Grade Magic, and this is from the company Grace and Honey, which if you don't know, is Becca from Becca and the Books' candle company. So starting off this shelf, we have the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend. These are some of my favourite ever middle grades and I would highly recommend them. The only thing is that I still haven't read Holopox because I was waiting for the release of the next book. However, that has been pushed back quite a while. So I might do a reread of the series when that book does eventually come out. And then we have Amari and the Night Brothers. Again, a fantastic middle grade series full of great representation. It's one that I would highly recommend. It is so fun, but also has a really high stakes element to it. It has a lot of supernatural elements involved as well. And I should have read the sequel by now because it came out a few months ago, but honestly, I've just been putting it off. I think I'm a bit scared to dive into it, but I can't wait to pick it up and I will definitely let you guys know my thoughts on it when I do. Then we have a few random middle grade books and series. We have Day I Fell Into a Fairy Tale by Ben Miller. We have The Pinch of Magic series by Michelle Harrison. Rainbow Grey, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. The first book in the Polar Bears Explorers Club, we have North Child. I then have some Sophie Anderson books there as well. I've read The Girl Who Speaks by, I really enjoyed it. I need to read the others. Frost Heart is a series that I should have finished as soon as I started it because I absolutely loved the first book by Jamie Litzler. But again, a common theme for me is that I struggle to continue on with the series, so I still need to read the second and third books. Hopefully I can do that this year though. I might need 
to reread the first book just to get myself immersed in the world once again but such an amazing series and I would highly recommend. We then have the A Murder Most Unladylike series by Robin Stevens. These are really fun middle grade murder mystery books. I have read quite a few, I've definitely read up to mistletoe and murder. I think I just need to read the last four but again I was on such a roll with these and then as soon as I got to mistletoe and murder I kind of stopped so I definitely need to dive back into these. It is a kind of continuation however you can read these separately so I'm not too bothered about rereading the previous books before diving into the next one and then the latest addition to my shelf is the Land of Story series by Chris Colfer. Bought these a while ago, I got the box set quite cheap, but I didn't really have a good place to put them, so they are just kind of scattered around here. This is a series that I'm hoping to start pretty soon, so again, hopefully I can do that this year, but if not, it is fine. I'm really happy to own all these books. I loved Chris Colfer on Glee, and I can't wait to see how he is as a writer. Moving down to this shelf, we have some more middle grade books, as you can see. Again, it's a bit of a mess because books are stacked kind of everywhere. We also have an Illumicrate pot that I keep more of my bookmarks in. I didn't realise I had so many bookmarks, but apparently I do. And we also have this Funko Pop of Cheshire Cat as well, who I absolutely love. I'm going to start off with my Michelle Paver books, so I will just show you the cover of these. This is a series that I bought at Yelk. If you guys don't know, Michelle Paver is one of my all-time favourite authors. I have another shelf that is dedicated completely to her and her books. She was such an important part of my reading journey and so of course when I saw this other series that she had I just had to buy all of them. This is a Greek myth inspired retelling as well and I will definitely be reading these this summer. I genuinely cannot wait and Michelle Paver does tend to include a lot of animal companions in her books as well which is an element that I just love. Next up we have the Magisterium books by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. I'm currently reading the Copper Gauntlet. I have been for a few months now, I kind of DNF'd it with the intention to pick it up again soon, so I still need to do that. The Summoner series, I read the first book, really loved it, haven't continued on. We have my Percy Jackson books here, The King Chronicles, we then have the Heroes of Olympus series here, and then the Magnus Chase books, and Daughter of the Deep, which is from Rick Riordan's publishing company. On the top here we have a Nightmare Before Christmas retelling, which is Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, which of course focuses on Sally. And I have Wild Spark here as well. This one was very kindly sent to me by Emily over at Emily Kathleen Reed, so thank you so, so much for that one. And then we have these books that are just stunning. So as you can tell, they are Disney books. I'm gonna have to hold them up like this because otherwise they're gonna fall down. But I have The Little Mermaid, Cinderella, Tangled, Frozen, Tinkerbell and the Secret of the Wings, and Beauty and the Beast. I got these in Aldi. I can't quite remember how much they were. They were featured in one of my previous hauls though. So if you want to try and find them, you definitely can. But I thought these would be really nice just to have. I have nieces. I'm also a teacher, so I can definitely take these into school with me. And yeah, I just really liked the fact that they all match, they all look really nice together, and I got some of my favourite films in book form as well. This next shelf is home to my smaller hardcover books. To be honest, I didn't really know where to put these, so they don't go with the vibe of this shelf, but we're just gonna go with it. Over here in this corner, as you can see, I have some tabs that I used to use when I annotated my books, however, I haven't really done that in a few years, so they've just kind of lived there since then. We also have a Yelk candle by Bookish Burns, which I got at Yelk. We have have some washi tape here which I don't know what it's from, it's probably from a subscription box. And then on the other side I have a Mermaid Lagoon candle by Midnight Flame. I don't really have too much to talk about for this shelf. There are a lot of books here that I need to continue on with because again I've started the first book and then haven't carried on with the rest of the books in the series such as the Aurora Cycle, This Savage Song and Serpent and Dove. Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf is an incredible YA fantasy that I really did enjoy, so I would highly recommend that if you're looking for a witchy, magical, romance-filled YA fantasy. These three are books that I've had on my shelf for years, which are Dark Tide, Middle Game, and House of Dragons. I've been wanting to read them for the longest time, but for some reason I keep putting them off, so I definitely think I will have to kind of do a series continuation vlog where I choose the series and maybe finish it off in its entirety because yeah there are so many here that I would like to continue on with even like the TJ Klune books I know that's not necessarily a series but I've read The House in the Cerulean Sea but I haven't read Under the Whispering Door so 
that could be a vlog, let me know if you guys would be interested in something like that. But I'm just going to move you down now to the last shelf on this bookcase, which again is not looking the best. In the corner here I have a kind of tea tin, I think it is, but I used it as a prompt tin for my TBR game, which is something that I haven't used in months because I stopped doing a TBR game. And then over here we have another candle by Grace and Honey, this one is the Goddess. And I thought it was quite fitting to be on this shelf because I do have some Greek mythology books here. Going back to the start of the shelf though, we have my Shatami books and then my Dexter books. Next to that we have a random book placed in here, I just don't think I had a space for it anywhere else but it is Never Never. This is of course a Peter Pan retelling that focuses on Captain Hook. Next up we have the David Bed trilogy, I read the first book, never carried on with the second and third books but they are on script so hopefully that's one I can pray soon. And then these ones are a bit of a random stack. A few of these are from Fairy Loot and then there are some that I have bought and read myself which for example are the V. Schwab books. I've read these two books, they weren't really my favourite and I don't have room on my Schwab shelf so that is why these are here. And then again, these are kind of books that don't really fit anywhere. You can see that they're really awkward sizes where they're just a little bit too short. So they're short hardcovers but they're even shorter than the short hardcovers if that makes sense. So they don't really have a good place because I do tend to organise my books by height so I have just kind of put them here out of view. Same goes for this one, it's a bit of a weird book for me, it is Do This For You by Chris Cella, which is a kind of fitness, lifestyle, motivational sort of book. I have just put it here because it doesn't really fit anywhere else. And then moving on, we have my Greek mythology books, which in this instance, these are actually too big to go on my other shelves. So as you can see, they just about fit on these bottom shelves and the bottom shelves are my biggest shelves. So I have had to put these here. Ultimately, I would like to have all of my Greek myth books together because I do have quite the collection now. But for now, they are fine here as long as they have a nice place that you can kind of see them. I'm not too angry about and you can definitely see these, it's just these that tend to be covered because I do have a kind of seat that goes here but it stops around the B. Schwab point I'd say so I can see those books but not the rest. So we have made it to the next shelf and this is my thinner shelf. There isn't as much room on here but because it is the kind of corner section to it but as you can see here I have some of my classics. I believe that these ones are the Penguin English Library editions and then the white ones with the kind of rainbow spines are the Bloomsbury Modern Classics. I don't know what these two in the middle are called, they are just the kind of pocketbook editions but I absolutely love this shelf, it is one of my most stunning shelves, I absolutely love it. It's next to the rest of these stunning books that I showed you earlier. Love how colourful they are, love the whole vibes of it, but I haven't really read as much from here as I would like to because classics really intimidate me and I feel really dumb reading them. So I do tend to put them off but it is a goal of mine to try and read more. Don't know when that will happen because I've been saying that for a few years but these are here for when I'm ready to dive in and honestly I can't wait. Moving down though we have some more of my smaller hardcovers, we have the Disney Twisted Tales books here, the ones that I have at least. I have a Hercules retelling, Alice in Wonderland retelling, Tangled retelling, Little Mermaid retelling and Peter Pan retelling and then I do have these two books, The Wish Granter and The Traitor Prince which are more kind of classic fairy tale retellings. I read, I can't remember if it was called The Snow Queen or not by the same author which was a Snow White retelling but I didn't have it in hardcover so it's not on here. And then I have House of Salt and Sorrows, this was a really good book, loved it, the atmosphere was just amazing. It is a retelling of the Twelve Dancing Prince princesses as well so again perfect for fans of mythology and the classic fairy tale vibes. And then we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I believe that this is a retelling of a Chinese myth, I can't quite remember which one. Let me see if it says on the synopsis. First though, how beautiful are these books? I'm actually obsessed with them. Okay, I can't quite tell whether it's inspired by something or not. You can pause this and read the synopsis if you'd like to. But if you do know what it's a retelling of, please do comment it down below. I have read Spin the Dawn, I really did enjoy it. Still need to read Unravel the Dusk. Not quite sure how it's gonna go because I didn't really enjoy the romance in the first book, 
but I do need to finish it off. It's only a duology, so I don't really have an excuse and I should be getting to the second book quite soon because another goal of mine this year is to try and finish off series, especially when they're just duologies because I tend to read the first books and then I just don't finish off the series, which is stupid of me. Moving down though to my next shelf, we of course have my Lee Bardugo books. These aren't all of them. I do actually have the hardcover editions of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. However, they don't fit on this shelf. And I do have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom in this stunning edition, so I have decided to keep these ones and then I've put the other two in my attic for now. But here I have Ninth House, which is a book I really enjoyed. I'm currently reading Hellbent as well. Haven't read The Language of Thorns, but it's a kind of short story collection in the Grishaverse. Then we have Shadow and Bone. Again, I do actually have the paperback editions for this whole trilogy. I have the three books. However, they are slowly being released in this kind of collector's edition, which of course matches the spines of the other books. So I only have the first one because that's the only one that's currently out. Then we have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, as I mentioned, and then we have King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. Now, I have not started this duology. I'm not sure when I will because I haven't really heard the best things. I loved the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which I feel like is a bit of an unpopular opinion. Really enjoyed Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom as well, but I'm just not sure about this next duology. I need you guys to let me know whether it's worth it or not, but I have kept them here because the spines are just beautiful and I might actually take off the dust jackets for Ninth House and Hellbent because they also have stunning foiling on the spines. I mean, look at all of these together, guys. I'm not sure. What do you think? I kind of like them with the dust jackets, but then again, they are so striking. I just think that they look insane. So yeah, again, please do let me know what you guys think. Moving on down to the next shelf, though, here we have some fairy loot and aluminum Crate special editions. I honestly just wanted a shelf to display some pretty books and Illumicrate and Fairy Loot books are some of the prettiest that I've ever seen. I don't know how well you'll be able to see but look at these stenciled edges you guys. That just gives you an inclination as to the amazing special editionness of these books. So I've kind of put the darker books here Moving on into Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I read this one, really did enjoy it, and I need to read the second book, but just to look at the contrast between them. Some people hate it, I absolutely love it. We then have A Dowry of Blood, which is one that I really want to get to soon. A River Enchanted is one that I've put on my TBR countless times and still haven't gotten to. And the same goes for these Hollow Vows, which I know I'm gonna love, and that's so frustrating that I haven't picked them up yet, but I feel like I need to be in the right mood for them. And so I'm just holding off until I know I can dedicate some time to reading them and with this one dive into the sequel straight away. Unfortunately guys I can't take any of these books out because I've wedged them in so tightly that they really don't want to move as you can see here. So I'm not gonna kind of play around with those. I do have an Illumicrate and Fairy Loot unboxing playlist if you would like to check those out. I do film the majority of my unboxing so you can see my initial reaction and the special editionness of these books. Moving down to the next shelf though, this is the Michelle Paver shelf I was telling you guys about. On the side here, we have a The Chosen One Candle, again by Grace and Honey, because this series, which is the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series, has The Chosen One trope in it. This is a fantastic middle grade series. It's in a prehistoric setting, which is something that I'd never read from before. And this is actually a special edition box set that I bought. You can tell that the first one's damaged though. I did buy this box set as brand new initially. However, it got lost in the post and I never got it. So I did reach out to the seller and got a replacement. However, I as you can see the first two books are quite battered, they are not in the best condition unfortunately, but these books match the editions that I have for the new trilogy that Michelle Paver has written. They are following the same characters just set years in the future. Again, let me know, do you think I should keep them in the box? I do kind of love having the box, especially because there are some amazing details on the side, which I might be able to show you actually, I might take these out to give you guys a glimpse. There you go, you can kind of see it there. It has the map from the book on there, which I just think is such a nice touch. The back just has a list of the books, and on the other side, we have another map. This is one of my favorite series of all time. It's one that I reread 
almost once every year because I just love it that much. I have the audiobooks for it, I have these collector's editions, and I have my standard paperback editions here. I've actually had to repurchase a few of these books because the books that I had, I've had them since I was about 10 years old, and they were just completely battered. Like, you can see Solita here has some light damage on it, but yeah, Wolf Brother has a cracked spine, Spirit Walker is the same, and I have had to replace a few because I have read them that much. For now though, I am just gonna keep it there. I might pull it out the box so we shall see but as I mentioned this is the continuation I haven't read these yet which is shocking I know considering that I love this first series so so much I think I've just been scared I was really happy with where the characters kind of left off in this first set of books and so seeing them again and seeing them face different hardships is just gonna be really difficult for me and yeah I'm a bit scared so I still haven't done that let me know though if you would like a dedicated reading vlog for this series I can do it spoiler free or spoiler filled these have just recently come out whereas these books have been out and about for I don't know how many years actually I started reading the series when I was about 10 11 12 years old and these have only just come out and I'm now 23 going on 24 so there has been quite a big gap between them that is also a reason I think why I've been putting them off but I got to see Michelle Paver talk about these books and some of her experiences at Hey Festival last year I believe it was I got to watch an interview that she did as part of the festival and again I just fell in love with her and I really wanted to get a move on with the series and finish it off so that is something that I plan on doing soon again though don't know when because I have all of these ambitious plans thinking I have all the time in the world when I really don't so we'll see about that one but yeah one of my favourite series ever by one of my favourite authors ever and so that's why it has its own shelf. Another one of my favourite authors is of course Victoria Schwab or V Schwab. This is my Schwab shelf. As you saw earlier though I do have some of her books scattered about. I have the This Savage Song duology there, I have Gallant and The Near Witch down here. Unfortunately they don't all fit in one shelf which I would love them to so I could have them all together but I just have too many of her books guys which is definitely not a bad thing. I just don't have the shelf space for it so for now these are the books that I have on here. We have two editions of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I can't remember which edition this is. It's either Fairy Loot, Waterstones or Illumicrate and then this one is the Illustrated Anniversary Edition which as you can see is a completely different coloured cover. I really do love it though. I don't know which one I prefer this is my aesthetic in a book however this just is so much creepier for me for some reason and I absolutely love it it has stunning sprayed edges and as I mentioned it does also have illustrations throughout in the side here I kind of have a wooden plaque that I think I either got an owl crate or a fairy loot box but it says sing you a song and steal your soul which is a quote by Victoria Schwab from the this savage song duology city of ghosts tunnel of bones and bridge of souls are her middle grade book it is a paranormal series that is really good. I would highly recommend. I listened to the audiobook. I can't remember if I listened to the audiobook for every one of these, but I believe that they are available on script and it's definitely a good way to consume the story if you're interested. The A Darker Shade of Magic books are just staples. I absolutely love them. And the same goes for Vicious and Vengeful as well. And then moving on down to the bottom shelf. This is my sci-fi shelf, which as you can see is quite small. I don't really read a lot of sci-fi books but it's definitely a genre that I would like to read more of. I honestly don't know why I don't read it as much because I love sci-fi films. I think it's just because reading it makes me feel a bit stupid just because they're normally quite technical and the size of some of these. For example, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars really puts me off because this is massive. Look at the size of this book you guys. Again though it's one I'm so excited to read. It's by the author of Aragon. Aragon is a book that I really enjoyed and I love the film as well. I grew up with the film. Same goes for the Star Wars books. I absolutely love Star Wars. I've seen every single film. I tend to rewatch them. I'd say every year because I just kind of get sucked into the world and the story every single time and I start off by saying oh I'll just watch this trilogy or this set of films and then I just watch them all back to back because how could you not? This one though I bought purely based on the cover. It is one of my favourite art pieces from Star Wars. I'm just obsessed with it. And then this one is a book that I actually ordered from America because as soon as I saw it I fell in love with it. I know it's really rare so I wanted to get my hands on it as soon as possible but it is the Princess Leia edition of the Star Wars trilogy. It has these silver gilded edges which again, I'm just obsessed with. On the back we have a scene of Leia with R2 when she asks Obi-Wan Kenobi for his help and it says here help me Obi-Wan you're my only hope 
As you can see, there is a Darth Vader edition. There is also an R2-D2 and C-3PO edition from what I've seen. These are definitely the two that I would be most interested in having though. And yeah, that one stays there. It's still in its plastic wrap because I'm so scared to damage it just because of how rare it is and how expensive it was. So that is why it still has the plastic on it. One day I will have a proper look at it. I will open it up and give you guys a kind of in-depth look. But for now, it's staying there. The Red Rising trilogy is one that I will be reading this year. I have read Red Rising before. I really did enjoy it. I just never carried on with the series. My stepdad actually started reading these books last year, though. He binged that series, guys. He was obsessed. And he's actually now waiting for the last book. So I definitely need to catch up to him so that we can discuss these. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson is another one that I've read. However, I haven't carried on with the rest of the books in the series. So need to do that at some point. And and then we have Ready Player One and Ready Player Two. Now, Ready Player One is one of my all-time favourite films. I saw it so many times in cinema and then I've re-watched it countless times since. I just love the whole thing. I love the premise, I love the execution, I love the characters and the whole story behind it. So that is why I have these books ready to go. However, I've heard so many bad reviews about Ready Player Two that I don't know if it's worth me reading it. I was thinking of doing a reading vlog for these where I try and read them back to back in a weekend just so I can see what I thought of it and let you guys know my thoughts as well but I'm not sure because I don't want to read Ready Play One, absolutely love it and then immediately hate the second book so yeah we'll see. They are books that I am planning on reading quite soon though but whether I film a reading vlog for them or not is unknown at this point. And then just quickly, I do keep another Grace and Honey candle on here. This is actually inspired by Ready Player One, which is why it's on this shelf. It is the Oasis and it looks really cool as well. It's this kind of ombre blue and purple vibe and I just love it. So that stays there with the books that it was inspired by. Moving on to my third shelf. This is again one of the bigger shelves. And as you can see, the top shelf houses my Cassandra Clare books. Now they do spread down to the second shelf as well. You can see I have some there. But the majority of them do live up here. So I have the Infernal Devices trilogy here. I then have the Last Hours trilogy. I have the City of Bones trilogy here, the Mortal Instruments series. Wow, I had a blank there. I have the Red Scrolls of Magic books and then I have the Shadowhunters Codex, Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy and Ghost of the Shadow Market, which are short stories set in Cassandra Clare's Shadowhunter world. Then we have the Dark Artifices here and the Bane Chronicles short stories as well. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that these were all of the Shadowhunter books that I owned. I have many duplicate copies of these books. I have special editions of them. I have paperback copies. I have multiple paperback copies, actually, just because they're different covers. So I have decided to just keep the standard hardcover editions on these shelves. Otherwise, I would have genuinely a full bookcase of Cassandra Clare's books. So. The rest of them are in my attic, safe and sound at the minute, but I do have the standard covers on show on my bookshelves just because they are such nostalgic books for me. Cassandra Clare is one of my all-time favourite authors and I absolutely love the spines of these books. I did also forget to mention that I do have the collector's edition of City of Bones here. This is a rare exception that is allowed in my bookcase because look at this, you guys. It is one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. It also has these stunning end pages and it says all the stories are true on there, which is just an iconic quote from the series. I can't remember if it's digitally signed or not. Have I made that up? I think so. Yeah, I can't see a digital signature, but we do have a letter from the author there, which is definitely a nice touch. And this is definitely one of my favourite special editions from this series. And I hope that they reprint the rest of the books in this edition as well. So I will just continue on with the rest of the books on this shelf now. We have some YA fantasy, as you can see. We have the Girls of Paper and Fire series there. I only have the first two books. Still haven't read them yet, though. I have the Guinevere Deception, the Camelot Betrayal, and the Excalibur Curse by Kirsten White. Read the first one, really did enjoy it, but I, again, haven't carried on with the rest of the books. These are beautiful covers, though, guys. Look at them. This is definitely one of the reasons why I have picked these books up. I'm just obsessed. And I definitely need to get a move on. 
with completing the trilogy. However, there was a romance element in this that I wasn't too keen on, so I think that is what has put me off. Sorcery of Thorns was a book that I really enjoyed. I also have An Enchantment of Ravens by the same author and a different edition of this book, but again, because of space, I have kept them either at my mum's house or in my attic. I will need to double check. Violet Made of Thorns is a YA fantasy that I got in a fairy loot. Wicked As You Wish is, I think, a mashup of a lot of different retellings, but I'm not too sure. A Curse of Dark and Lonely is one that I read and loved, but I still need to buy the second and third books in hardcover so that I can finally get around to reading them. Gilded Wolves is one that I've almost unhauled a lot, but something has told me to keep a hold of it. Same goes for the Scholomance trilogy by Naomi Novik. I have the three books, haven't read a single one. It's a problem, guys. I'm trying to get over it. I'm just so scared of books going out of print. So that is why I tend to buy the next book in a series or the rest of the series before even starting it. And then here we have the collector's edition of Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is one of my favourite books of all time. I don't really love this special edition, I don't love the colour of it, but I did want to buy it as it's a hardcover copy of one of my favourite books and it lives next to the Golden Enclaves because of the whole colour situation. <laughs> Moving down to the next shelf, this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing because I have a mixture of YA fantasy and adult fantasy plus a bit of retellings in this one as well. So here we have the Witch Sign trilogy, I don't know if there's an actual name for it, but this is by Dan Patrick. I again bought these ones based on the cover alone because Look at this one, here's the second book, and this is the first book. Look at those you guys, I just could not pass up the opportunity to buy these, and I still haven't read them yet, which is awful of me, but I'm so happy to own these. I did start Witch Sign actually, I just wasn't in the right headspace to read it because of course it's the start of a new fantasy trilogy, there was a lot of information and I was feeling quite slumpy so I put it off until I feel like I'm ready to dive back in. We then have Book of Night by Holly Black which is one I'm not sure if I'm gonna read or not depending on the reviews that I see. The Book Eaters is a fairy loot book, it is a gorgeous one and I'm very interested in it but I think this one as well as Wild and Wicked Things I will be keeping to read more towards October time. The Maidens is I believe it's a dark academia murder mystery kind of book but again I haven't heard the best things so I've just kind of kept it here because it matches the aesthetic of the rest of the books. The Unspoken Name is one that I really do want to read, I've heard amazing things about this one but again it's a new adult fantasy book and I'm a bit scared to dive in. We have a Grady Hendrix book which I've never read from this author before. I'm also a person that gets scared quite easily so I'm not sure if this book is going to terrify me. Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, one of the most stunning books ever. However, I've not heard the best things about this one either so I'm not sure when I'll pick this one up. It is massive you guys, look at the size of this book. It is chunky so I'd rather be reading books that I'm excited for at the minute than books that are just gonna put me in a slump. Little Thieves is one that I've been really wanting to pick up actually but again I might keep till October. We have Malice, Heartless and Gilded which are all fairy tale retellings. We have the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. These are the Illumicrate editions. I did have the fairy loot editions but I unhauled them because I had these. I just much preferred the covers and the stenciled edges of these books to the fairy loot ones so that is why I have these ones. Again, haven't actually started this duology yet, I don't know if it's going to be a series actually but happy to have them and I love the editions. We have a kind of sword letter opener replica. I want to say from Fairy Loot. Then we have The Night Circus and The Stellar Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Two of the most popular books ever and two books that I haven't read because the hype has scared me so much. Lastly we have Portrait of a Thief which is another one I got in an Illumicrate I want to say. I'm so excited for this one, it's been on so many TBRs but I still haven't gotten to it for some reason so I will be rectifying that soon as I do think it's one that I'm just gonna love. Moving down to the next shelf, the majority of these books are YA fantasies. I'm not sure whether you'd count the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden as YA or adult. I will start off though by showing you the Winter Night Trilogy. These are the Fairy Loot editions and I just love them so so much. Now this is a series that I haven't actually read yet but just from everyone's reviews I feel like I'm gonna absolutely love it when I do read it. I have just wanted to be able to kind of dedicate the time to read this series and unfortunately I haven't been able to do so yet. The Beautiful by Renee Adier is one of my favourite books 
books of all time. It is a murder mystery book set in New Orleans in which we have vampires and werewolves. So it shouldn't really be my type of thing because of the paranormal elements to it. However, I ate this up. I fell in love with it. And you actually get the perspective of a serial killer in this as well, which I think is what drew me to it and what made me love it so much. I read the second book, didn't love it as much, and then I still haven't read the third book. I think I'm just scared to see how it's all gonna wrap up, but it's one that I really do want to get to soon. I'm just so, so scared to dive in. More stunning books, we have These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. Again, read the first book, absolutely loved it. I gave it four stars, I think, just because the romance element in it wasn't for me. And I still haven't picked up the second book, though it has only just been released. So I am gonna give myself a little bit of leeway there. Kingdom of the Wicked. I have the first three books and I haven't even started this yet. But again, I've heard amazing things and I feel like it's definitely gonna be one that I love. Belladonna, The Last Tale of the Flower Bride and The Whispering Dark are recent fairy loot books and I cannot wait to read every single one of these. I feel like they are definitely gonna be new favourites of mine and I'm so excited to actually sit down and read them. We then have the Stalking Jack the Ripper series by Carrie Maniscalco. Again, read the first book, really enjoyed it. Haven't carried on with the rest of the books in the series. Same goes for for Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is one of my all-time favourite books, you guys. Everything about it was phenomenal. My issue is, is that I think this is either going to be a trilogy or a series, and there is such a big chunk of time between the release of these books that I'm just scared to kind of carry on with it and then have to wait years for the next book. So I have read this book twice now, I think, in anticipation for this one. Still haven't read this one, but I think I will go for the audiobook when I do. So for now, it is just kind of chilling there. I did meet Tomi Adeyemi at Yelk actually and I do have it signed as you can see I still even have the poster in it which is quite funny but yeah loved this book when it came out fell in love with Tomi Adeyemi as an author I just need to do more research into whether this is a series or not and then just to let you know on this shelf I also keep another Grace and Honey candle you guys can tell how much I love this shop but we have Becca's Bookopolathon I can't remember what year this is oh 2021 it says on it that's very handy thank you Becca so this is from 2021 and then I do actually have another Bookopolathon candle on the Cassandra Clare slash YA fantasy kind of shelf there this this one is the newest one. It was from last year's round, which is 2022. And I must say this is one of my all time favorites. So I do have this one and I have a spare, but that just lives up there for now. And of course, I had the Bookopolathon one on this shelf. Moving down to what is possibly my favourite shelf, we have more of my fantasy books. Once again, this is a bit of a mismatch because I have some YA fantasy and some adult fantasy here. These first four I haven't actually read yet, but they sound like they're going to be right up my street. I cannot wait to finally get to them. Again, it's the case of having a new adult fantasy books to dive into. I know I'm going to have to pay a lot of attention to them to kind of understand what's going on in the world and the magic systems and things like that. So I am waiting for a time when I am a little bit less slumpy, but I cannot wait to read these ones. They've been highly recommended by so many people that I trust. And as I mentioned, I definitely think that these are gonna be for me. Moving on though, here we have a Funko Pop. It's of the dog from the Pirates of the Caribbean films. They are some of my all time favorite films and I just love this dog so, so much. I also really like him because he's a felt material, not the plastic material that you normally get with Funko Pops and yeah I just think he's so cute so he lives here but next up book wise we have the Fury Born series I think it's called the Imperium trilogy I may be wrong but again I read Fury Born I want to say like two three years ago now absolutely fell in love with it it's one of my favorite books of all time but because of that, I was so scared to carry on with the series, so I never did. This is one, though, that I do plan on reading in either April or May, depending on what my kind of life situation is. I will have to reread Fury Bond, though, because I haven't read it for a long time, and I'd need to know what is in that book before diving into the second and third books. Next up, we have some John Gwynn books, and I have to show you the covers of these guys, because that is why I bought these books. Look how insane these covers are, you guys. Aren't they just the most beautiful things? Like, they are so vicious, but beautiful. I just absolutely love them. Wolves are some of my favourite other animals, and of course, dragons are dragons, so we're bound to love them. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about John Gwynn. He is the author of the Malice books. 
I do actually have Malice on this shelf here, which I will show you in a second. He's apparently an amazing fantasy author, and this is a Viking-esque inspired world, so it's bound to be a favourite of mine. I'm just currently reading so many adult fantasies at the minute that I have put it off until I can give it my full attention. Next up we have the A Chorus of Dragon series. I do only have the first two books, however <laughs> I started reading Ruin of Kings, I don't know how long ago, it was almost a year ago now, and I only made it up to page I think a hundred and something. The bookmark's still in it as you can see, I just wasn't in the right headspace for this, and I was even filming a reading vlog for it at the time as like a booktuber recommends vlog where I obviously read it on Jade from JD Ray Reads recommendation and yeah if you still want to see that vlog let me know because I do have the initial footage of when I started to read it however I probably would have to go back now and reread what I first read of it in order to remember what's going on in the story. Then we have Falling Kingdoms and Rebel Spring. These are the first two books in the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes which is a YA fantasy series compared a lot to A Game of Thrones. I read the first book last week, absolutely loved it, I am going to be continuing on with the series and I have bought the rest of the books in the series so I'm not sure where this series is going to have to move to. I'm going to have to move stuff about on these shelves once again but yeah it's a series that I do think I'm going to really enjoy. It's a fast paced high stakes YA fantasy and I really did enjoy reading them. And then as you can see the last books I have on here we have the Last Magician series by Lisa Maxwell. Now again I don't know if this series has a name but we have The Last Magician, The Devil's Thief, and The Serpent's Curse. I thought this was a trilogy, however, the fourth book has just been released, or is about to be released. And again, this is one I did start on audio, but I feel like I wanted to read it physically. It's one of Hannah from A Clockwork Reader's favourite series, and so I do want to dedicate some time to it because I do tend to enjoy the same books as Hannah, and I trust her recommendations as well. From what I can remember, this is a time traveller YA fantasy book, where The Last Magician is looking for some lost relics. Apparently it's an amazing underrated series and I have all the books to hand except for the newest one so that I can binge it once the series is complete. This next shelf I have is all adult fantasy and the majority of it as you can see is made up of Robin Hobb books. Now I've read all of these which I'm so so proud of. I read them as part of the Catch Up Book Club which is a book club hosted by Becca over at Becca and the Books, the same Becca who makes the Grace and Honey candles. So I will leave her channel linked down below if you would like to check her out. But we have the Farsi trilogy here behind oh. another Grace and Honey candle which is The Wit. The Wit is one of the magic sources in this series so I do just keep that there. We then have the Live Ship Traders trilogy, the Tawny Man trilogy, the Rainwild Chronicles, which is the only set of books in this world that has four books instead of it being a trilogy, and then we have the Fits and the Fall trilogy. I gave the majority of these books, if not all of them, five stars absolutely loved them, had such an amazing time reading them. Again, it's a massive achievement for me to have read 16 books in an adult high fantasy series and yeah, I'm happy to say that I loved every single minute of it. So thank you to the Catch Up Book Club for making me read those. I definitely wouldn't have picked them up on my own and as I mentioned, it's now a favourite series of mine. So I'm hoping that the rest of these books that you see will be the same case. We have some Brandis Anderson books on the side here. We have Miss Bond book one and book two. I read The Final Empire, really enjoyed it but as is the case with everything I haven't carried on. Elantris is one of my favourite books, I absolutely loved that and that is what made me fall in love with Brandon Sanderson as a writer. I then have The Bone Ships which I've not heard the best things about so I've kind of left that one there. Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames is apparently amazing and I've bought this one for my stepdad actually so I'm excited to see what he thinks of it. Same goes for Black Hawks by David Ragg. This is another one where I want to read the first book and the second one back to back in reading vlog over a weekend. They are both available on screen so I might read them physically and also listen to the audiobooks because I tend to retain information a lot better that way. So again, if that's something you'd like to see, please do let me know. And then, as I mentioned, we have our John Gwyn book, which is Malice. Now, I actually was gifted this by Liam, so thank you, Liam. The gift note is still in there. It really does mean a lot to me that you wanted to send this to me to cheer me up, so yeah. Thank you so, so much. But this has received a lot of hype recently and it's definitely an older book. I feel like this series has been around for quite a while, but it's having a kind of resurgence where a lot of YouTubers that I watch are reading it and loving it. So I'm very happy to have the first one. It might be one that I pick up on a win one day and just kind of power through it. Not sure if I want to do that just yet though because it is part of a series as I mentioned and the books only get thicker. And then we've finally made it to the bottom shelf of the 
third bookcase. As you can see, we have my Heartstopper graphic novels here. I still haven't read that yet because again, I want to film a dedicated reading vlog for that. It's a series that has so much love and so I wanted to document my experience reading it. We have some kind of random paperbacks on the top here that I didn't really have space for on my other paperback shelves. So there is an overflow at the minute. I have just filmed an unhaul as well, which is not great of me, the fact that I don't have space. But these are all books that I'm really excited for and I am desperate to read. So that is why that they are still here. On the bottom here, we have a candle from Bookish Burns. This is another one that I got at Yalk. It is the Bibliophile candle, which smells of honeysuckle and elderflower. And let me tell you, this is one of the best smelling candles ever. I absolutely love it. The first set of books I have here though is the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Schusterman. I got this box set from Rachel over at Rachel Karras. So thank you so, so much, Rachel. I believe that she sent me them for my birthday. I haven't read them yet because I've not heard the best things about the toll, but everyone says it's worth reading the series just to experience the first two books. So I might have to do that over the summer holidays. Moving on, we have the six Tudor Queens books. Now I only have books one, two, three, and six, which I know it's really random to have the sixth book and not the fourth and fifth, but I bought the first, second, and third book and then realized that the sixth book had just come out and I saw it on a deal in Tesco. So I decided to buy it when I saw it and I still haven't bought books four and five yet. So that is why it looks a bit strange, but these are some amazing books. I never thought I would love historical fiction as much and I do love my history. I love learning about different time periods and the Tudor dynasty is one that I am especially interested in. These books are long though, guys. They aren't the easiest to get into, I'd say, but as soon as you pass the kind of 30 to 50 page mark, you are definitely into the story and the writing style. And from that point onwards, it's a lot easier to read the books. I am currently, I don't know if my bookmark is still in there. Yes, it is. I am currently reading the second book, which is the book focusing on Anne Boleyn, of course. Again, this was around the point where I hit my reading slump, so I did have to put it down for a bit just because of how kind of dense and information heavy it was, but it's one that I'm very excited to pick up again, and I will be doing so hopefully in March if I finish the rest of the books that are on my set TBR. Then, as you can see, we have a fairy tale retelling, which is Cursed by Marissa Meyer. This is the sequel to Gilded that I showed you earlier. However, this hasn't come out in hardcover. It's only out in paperback, and I'm not too mad about it because the paperback book is stunning. It has these gorgeous frayed edges. I do just wish that I had a matching set. We then have Sister Song, which is more of a mythology retelling, I want to say. The Blood Trials. This is one that I'm desperate to read. I've heard amazing things about it, and it's only a duology as well, not a big fantasy series, so that is definitely making me want to pick it up soon. Twin Crowns and Her Dark Wings, again, are ones that I would like to get to as soon as possible. Legendborn, I've already read. Couldn't get into it physically, but listened to the audiobook and loved it. Still haven't bought the second book, though, but I am keeping an eye out for it on Scribd, and if I do see it on there, I will, of course, listen to it. These four books are the Graceling series. I honestly don't know too much about this, but I saw them on offer at the works, I think, and so I decided to pick them up. It is definitely a nostalgic YA series, though. I remember these being out years ago when I first started reading. I can't remember what it's about, though. I will just kind of pop it there and you can pause to read the synopsis if you want to, but I believe it's about a girl who kills everything she touches, which honestly just sounds amazing. Then the last few books I have on this shelf, we have have The Girl King by Mimi Yu. This is one that I've owned for the longest time and for some reason I never prioritise it though I know it's going to be a book that I love. Same goes for The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. The second book for that is already out. I haven't bought that one yet though because I still haven't read the first book of course and as it's out in paperback and I have the first book in paperback I'm not really scared that it's going to go out of print because it is going to be a well-loved fantasy series. The next two books I have there are the second and third book in the First Law trilogy. I actually have the the first one to hand here though because it is on my TBR cut. This is what it looks like. It's The Blade Itself and this is the next adult high fantasy series that I'm going to be reading as part of the Catch Up Book Club. I should have already finished this by now, not going to lie guys, and I haven't even started it. I have just had a credit on Audible though so I am going to download the audiobook and get a start on it tonight. Otherwise I'm going to be behind on book one. So yeah, that is that series. I will be reading all of the books in the kind of first lore world. I don't know how many there are. I just know that there are a few. This is the first 
trilogy though and of course as I go on with the rest of the books I will have to purchase them. And then Half a King is another Joe Abercrombie one but this is a separate series. I bought that again I think from the works, it was in an offer and I didn't even realise that it was by the same author as the First Law trilogy but now that I know I'm very much excited for it and even though I probably won't get to it for a while I know it's going to be worth the wait. And then I don't know whether I showed you the books on here properly but we have Princess of Souls. This was an arc I believe? Yeah, it's an advanced reader copy. I read To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo and met her on tour as well. Really enjoyed that book. Then we have Ace of Spades, which I'm dying to read. We have Wendy Dowling, which is a Peter Pan retelling, and Ray Bearer, which is a fantasy book. The Tethered Mage, I'm not sure if it's an adult book or a YA book, but it's another book that I found at the works. I bought it quite cheap, and then I realised that it's actually a very popular series, so I will definitely have to get on that. After the Fire is a book that I've owned for years. Loved it. It's a book about a we have Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I love the cover of this, you guys. Let me just show you. Look at this, you guys. Isn't it just the most magical, whimsical cover ever? I am just obsessed with it. And this is another book that Liam gifted me. So thank you once again, Liam, for this one. And then we have Blood Orange, which is a thriller, and The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which is a book that I've been wanting to read for the longest time. I'm just not sure if it's going to be for me. So it's staying here for now. But whether I read it or not is something that I'm not sure on. Right, we have finally made it to the last shelf you guys once again I am pretty high up so I can't really show you the books in too much detail but moving from the left we have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is a beloved book that I still haven't read yet so I definitely need to get on that. The second book has just been released as well from what I can gather so yeah need to prioritize that one. We then have Uprooted and Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, both books that I love. Vespertine, Poster Girl, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and The City of Dusk are all fairies loop books that I need to get to. We then have The Once and Future Witches, which is one that I've debated on hauling, to be honest with you, but something is making me keep hold of it. Next to that, we have the Poppy War trilogy. This is one of the most loved trilogies ever, and I definitely am intimidated by it. I did start listening to the audiobook of the Poppy War whilst on holiday, and for some reason never carried on with it. I think I need to sit down and read these books physically just to get the most out of it. So that is why I haven't read those ones yet. So next to it, though, we have the Nevernight books by Jay Kristoff, some of my favourite books of all time. And then we have my two editions of Babel by R.F. Kuang. We have the Illumicrate and Fairy Loot editions that are just absolutely stunning. Again, I should have an unboxing for these, so I will leave them linked down below if you want to check those out. But moving on down to the next shelf, I love this shelf because of how colourful it is. First up, we have my Lainey Taylor books. So we have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone and didn't love it, so I never carried on with the series, but people do say it gets better. I just... I don't know, there's something that has been kind of keeping me away from it. Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares, though, are two of my all-time favourite books. They are so beautifully written and so beautiful in general. Like, let me just show you guys the covers. I'm just obsessed, you guys. Look at the Gilded Edges. Strange the Dreamer has gold and Muse of Nightmares has silver. These are the Illumicrate editions. I was lucky enough to get my hands on them and I'm so glad that I did because these are my prized possessions. I don't think anything will ever turn top the way I felt reading Strange the Dreamer. I just fell in love with it from the get-go and if you haven't read this duology yet I would highly recommend because it's one of the most beautiful things that you will ever read. Next up we have She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is a gorgeous book. It is a standard edition. I thought I had a special edition but apparently not. We then have some Sebastian de Castell books. We have the prequel duology here. I'm not sure if it's going to be a series but I have The Way of the Agosi and The Fall of the Agosi and then I have all the books in the Spellslinger series except for the third book which is impossible to find in hardcover. This little section here houses all of my pink books as you can see. The Stardust Thief is out because I am planning on reading that one soon. Honestly I'm planning on reading all of these soon but I unfortunately have to prioritise some over others so I have the Stardust Thief out. The Prison Healer and Jade Fire Gold are some that I'm desperate to get to though. Foul Lady Fortune is another book by Chloe Gong who was the author of These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends that I showed you earlier. I've read Girl Serpent Thorn, absolutely loved it and just look at the aesthetic of this book you guys, I am obsessed. And Six Crimson Cranes is one that I haven't read yet but it's by Elizabeth Lim who is the same author as the Spin the Dawn duology. Moving on down to the next shelf we have my Priory of the Orange Tree Candle here by Grayson Honey. It's called Red Damsels. 
and of course we have another fake plant so let me just move these off the shelf so that you can see all of the books that are on here as with the pink section up there we kind of have a yellow section and a blue section on here but we have plain bad heroines which is a book that again i've been meaning to read for the longest time it came out about two years ago i want to say and i just haven't picked it up which is really annoying of me. We then have Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. We have This Vicious Grace by Emily Seed which I still have the author letter for there. We have another one of my all-time favourite books which is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. The second book is coming out I want to say next month so I am definitely excited for that one. I have pre-ordered it and I can't wait. Then we have The Bone Season, The Mime Order and The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon who is the same author but this is a YA kind of paranormal series I want to say which I have started I've read the bone season about two or three times or started it at least but I've never finished it so I don't know if this is the one for me but I get further in every time I read it and something has told me to keep a hold of these so that's why they're still there next up we have the An Ember in the Ashes series by Sabata here these are the fairy loot editions which again I will just have to pull out and show you guys because they are beautiful okay so these are the covers which are stunning enough by themselves let me just give you guys a little close up and then fairy loots have gone the extra mile and given us some gorgeous sprayed edges or stenciled edges I should say they are just so beautiful and I'm ashamed to say that I haven't read the series yet this is again like an old school YA fantasy series that everyone was raving about when I first started getting into reading and joining booktube and things like that so I think I have been put off a little bit by the hype and the fact that it's a four book series is kind of intimidating but I've heard amazing things can't wait to dive in and I'm so happy to have this stunning set of books and then from these books that are left I really want to read fire with fire once Upon a Broken Heart is one that I can't read yet or The Ballad of Never After because I still haven't finished the Caraval trilogy. Havenfall is one that could be in hold depending on whether I read it this year or not because it's one that I've owned for years and just keep kind of skipping over. Midnight in Everwood is one that I read just before Christmas and really enjoy. Then we have The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O which is just the most beautiful book ever and I can't wait to read it even though I'm not sure if it's going to be my type of thing. I've heard nothing but amazing things. And then we have a Winter's Promise which is part of the Mirror Visitor Quartet. I bought this book a while ago but I haven't really heard the best things about the rest of the books in the series so I have been debating giving the series a miss just because I don't know if I want to dedicate my time to reading this book to then be disappointed by the ending. Moving on down we have my Sarah J Mass shelf. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these books because I feel like they are all over booktube, booktok and bookstagram but here we have a candle from Enchanted Realm. It's inspired by A Court of Mist and Fury and it's called To the Stars Who Listen. We also have another one of these fairy loot sword replica things. So it is of Damaris so I keep it here. On the left here I have my collector's edition of Throne of Glass. Then I have the Throne of Glass series in its entirety in hardcover. This might be something that you guys would want to know about. This is actually a copy of Kingdom of Ash. I bought it from Barnes and Noble and got it delivered to the UK obviously because I really wanted the edition with Selena on the inside of the dust jacket mainly because I wanted to be able to display it on my shelves like that because I just think it's the most stunning thing ever and I'm so so happy that I was able to get myself a copy. We then have my Crescent City books which I have just decided to display for you guys because it's a little bit easier but we have the standard hard covers here and then I do actually have the tour editions for both Crescent City and House of Sky and Breath. I am terrified you guys that I'm going to miss out on the tour edition for the third book. I just have this really bad anxiety surrounding it and I'm really stressing about it even though I know it's not going to be released for a few years yet. It's just playing on my mind and I don't know what I'll do if I don't get my hands on one because I know people will be selling them for a ridiculous amount of money so keep your hopes up for me please. I will sell an arm and a leg for it not gonna lie so yeah they are just beautiful books I'm so happy to own them but as I mentioned terrified that I won't be able to get my hands on the tour edition of the next book then we have the A Court of Thorns and Roses series we have A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, A Court of Frost and Starlight and A Court of Silver Flames plus the collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses as well I'm not gonna pull these out because I feel like you know what the covers are like I obviously have the old covers for the first four books and then the new covers 
cover for A Court of Silver Flames, which is the newest release. I'm not a massive fan of the new covers. I don't mind them, but I would have preferred for them to keep it kind of like this. But there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately, so I am going to have to continue buying the newer books in these new covers. Moving down to the next shelf, I think I lied earlier, guys. I think this one is my favourite shelf. I mean, how could it not be? Look at these stunning books, you guys. There is something about this shelf that just makes me so happy. Obviously, you guys know that I really do love my Greek myths. As I mentioned earlier, I definitely love learning about different cultures and history and things like that. And ancient Greece is something that I'm so, so fascinated by, especially the myths as well, because I grew up listening to Tales of the Myths. I did projects in school about ancient Greece and ancient Egypt. So it definitely is a big part of my life and and I just love the collection that I've built of these Greek myth and Egyptian retellings. First up, we have Troy by Stephen Fry. I believe that this is a non-fiction book, but honestly, I just bought this mainly because of the cover. I am interested in Troy, of course, but it's not like top priority for me at the minute because I do feel like I know a lot about the Trojan War. So this is one that I will be getting to eventually. I will probably listen to the audiobook because I did listen to Mythos by Stephen Fry on audiobook as well, which is a book with information and stories about the Greek gods. That is beautiful though. We then have Pandora, Ariadne, Electra. Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes is a new release that I'm dying to read because it's a retelling of the story of Medusa. Look at the stenciled edge here guys, I'm absolutely obsessed and it is a Waterstones signed exclusive edition which I just cannot believe that I have a book signed by Natalie Haynes. It is a prized possession of mine, I need to get the sticker off though and yeah I can't wait to read it as I said. Circe guys is one of my all-time favourite books. I read this physically and listened to the audiobook at the same time and I just fell in love with it completely. It is such a beautiful story following the goddess Circe who was exiled and we see her meet different characters that are well known in Greek mythology such as Odysseus and we follow her as an outcast god where she is now living as a witch. It is honestly the most beautiful thing I can't even tell you and I would highly recommend you read this one especially if you loved the Song of Achilles. It's a different vibe but it's just so beautifully written that you're sure to love it. We then have some more retellings focused on the women. We have Daughters of Sparta by Claire Hayward, Ithaca by Claire Norton, we have The Silence of the Girls and The Women of Troy by Pat Barker. These have stunning covers. I have a copy here of The Iliad and The Odyssey by Homer. I have read The Odyssey. I haven't read The Iliad yet though, so I definitely need to sit down one day and try and power through. I'm not too sure what edition this is. I believe I got it off of Amazon. There's the little barcode. It just kind of says BG Classic Editions. So I don't know if that's of any use and the ISBN is there if you do want to try and find it. This book with a snake on it is just so cool. This is Law by Alexandra Bracken, but this is the Fairy Loot edition. I still actually have my bookmark in there because, as you can see, I started to read it. I didn't get too far through though, and I decided to put it down. I just wasn't in the headspace to read it at the time that I picked it up, but it's one that I do want to continue on with because I did really enjoy the premise. The Song of Achilles is a classic. It's by the same author as Circe, as I mentioned, and this is a collector's edition, which is just beautiful. I do actually have the paperback for it down there, which I will show you guys in a second, but I couldn't resist buying this one when I saw it. It has beautiful end pages and it does also have a signed book plate in it, which again is just mind-boggling to me that I have this. So that is a prized possession that I keep there. We then have Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. We have my Percy Jackson and the Olympians box set, which again, I got from Barnes & Noble actually. I got it shipped over to the UK. I'm so glad I did because these are just stunning. And I know that I've got the Percy Jackson books kind of over there, but if this doesn't scream kind of Greek mythology to you guys, I don't know what does. And it just looks so, so good on this shelf. Next to that is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, another retelling focusing on the women of Greek mythology. And then we have Lifestyle of Gods and Monsters, which is one that I definitely need to prioritize. I do then have some non-fiction books as you can see. I have Medea and Other Plays by Euripides, Jason and the Golden Fleece by Apollonius, we have The Library of Greek Mythology by Apollodorus, and then we have some of the A Very Short Introduction books. So we have A Very Short Introduction into Ancient Greece, A Very Short Introduction into Ancient Egypt, and A Very Short Introduction into Egyptian Myth. 
Lastly for this shelf we have this tiny book which is Galatea by Madeline Miller. This is a short story as you can see which again focuses on a Greek myth and it's a really beautiful book to pick up as a gift for someone or if you do just want to read a little bit more about some stories from ancient Greece then it's a perfect place to start. Moving on down we continue with some of my Greek myth retellings here because these paperbacks wouldn't fit on here. I could have stacked them but I thought it looked a bit messy so I have just brought them down here. We have The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes. I read this last year and loved it. As I mentioned I have already listened to Heroes by Stephen Fry and I do have the audiobook for Mythos as well so I will be getting to those soon and then we of course have my paperback of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. From there you can see that I've kind of stayed with the blue colour scheme until we get to the white and black books. Here we just have a collection of some murder mystery and thriller books. Some of the ones that stand out to me that I really need to read soon are The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji. This is one that I've heard amazing things about and yeah I cannot wait to read it. Same goes for The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. This is a newer purchase for me but again can't wait to read it. The Asawa Murders by Riku Onda is another one that I'm desperate to get to. You can see a theme here guys. Then we go into A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I've read the full trilogy and the World Book Day book. It's one of my favourite ever trilogies. It's a YA murder mystery series from the same author as Five Survive which is up there somewhere. Absolutely love this, would highly recommend and yeah it's definitely an all-time favourite of mine. Then I have my Karen M. McManus books. As you can see I do have quite the collection. I've read One of Us is Lying, Two Can Keep a Secret and You'll Be the Death of Me from this stack. So I do have three that I have read and three that I haven't read. I tend to take these on holiday with me because they are such fast-paced YA thrillers and I just eat them up you guys. I really do enjoy them. The TV show for One of Us is Lying is actually on Netflix as well and I really enjoyed the first season so I would highly recommend that if you do want to watch it instead of reading it or watch it and read it. I had a really good time with it and Tom enjoyed it as well. And then as you can see here we just have a few thrillers and I have my Santa Stark Funko Pop here as well. And we have finally made it to the last shelf you guys. This again is a bit of a mismatch. There isn't really that much of an order to it. It's just a kind of paperback shelf where I've managed to fit as many as I can on here. Right at the top here we have Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean which I will just kind of get out and show you guys. This is an LGBTQ plus middle grade. I haven't read it yet but I am desperate to get to it. It's just the most beautiful book and from what I've heard it's really impactful and it has a really nice message in it as well. Then we have the Illuminae files there. I have read Illuminae and I really enjoyed it but again never carried on with the rest of the books in the series. I was lucky enough to meet Jay Kristoff though so he did sign this book for me and he had a stamp of Amy Kaufman's signature as well so even though she wasn't there I did manage to get this book signed. Next to that we have The Binding by Bridget Collins which if you've seen my unhaul you'll know that I've kind of given myself a year to read that book or I have to unhaul it. Same goes for The Dark Queen by Josephine Boyce. That is a YA fantasy that I've owned for years now but something has kept me from getting rid of it. And then we have Beast of Prey by Ayanna Gray there as well. On the side here we have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I am going to try listening to the audiobook for that one. Foul is Fair by Hannah Kappen and The Vanishing Half by Brooke Bennett are two that I really do want to read. They're just a little bit out of my comfort zone. Docile by K.M. Spara is actually quite similar to that. It is a dystopian from what I can gather and this was actually sent to me by Christy. This is one of her favourite books and when she saw it on my wish list she did buy it for me for my birthday. I know that Rachel from Rachel Keris also read this recently and fell in love with it so I do think it's one that I'm going to really enjoy. It's just very intimidating size wise and genre wise because it is something that is out of my comfort zone but I am hoping to read it soon and I will of course let you guys know my thoughts on it when I do. To the side here we have my Poison Study books. Red Poison Study in December, fell in love with it. As you can see the second book is not on there because I am trying to read it this month just so that I can actually carry on with the series because I don't want this to be another series where I start and then just kind of forget about. Then we have kind of some murder mystery, fantasy, thriller type of books. They're books that I would like to read but are not top priority for me. That is until we get to the kind of red 
books here. We have The Girls I've Been, which I believe is a YA thriller, and I am definitely more excited about that one. We have The Appeal, which is written by the same author as The Twyford Code. This is another one that I've started. I don't know if you can see the bookmark there. Hadn't really gotten that far in, but I was just not vibing with it at the time, so I'm gonna give it another go at some point. I might read The Twyford Code first, though, because I've heard that people have a better time with that one. So we'll see about that. The Honjin Murders is one that I read and really enjoyed. The Dark Vault by V. Schwab. This is one of the only V. Schwab books that I haven't actually read. This has two books in one, actually. It's kind of a compendium, but I believe it was meant to be a trilogy and then the third book never came out. So I don't know whether it's worth reading the first two books or not, because I don't like it when we have an open-ended book. So I've been debating reading this or not. Everyone says that it's amazing, though, so I might give it a go. But yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. The Queen of the Tealing is one of the oldest books I own and I still haven't gotten to it but apparently it's an amazing fantasy book so I definitely need to prioritise that. And then the last book here that I'm going to talk about in depth is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This was actually sent to me by Victoria from What Victoria Read and we follow Chanel Miller of course who is the survivor of the Stanford sexual assault case. This is definitely going to be a harrowing book which is why I think I've put it off for so long but I do feel like it's going to be such an important one as well. And I've already read two non-fiction books this year guys so I definitely feel like this is the year that I'm going to finally pick this one up. I'm so interested in hearing her story and I'm so glad that she has actually shared her story in this way because I know that going through something like this is just completely traumatic and so yeah for her to share her story and speak up about what happened to her she's just, just the bravest person so I definitely want to dedicate some time to this book and listen to her story. So that is the end of my main shelves but as I mentioned I do have a little shelf here and I might as well just show you what is on there quickly. We have another book tin here that I'm just going to move out the way but this is my manga shelf as you can see. I don't really have too many because I am trying to sample a few to see what I enjoy. We have some comics here to start off with though actually. We have The Umbrella Academy and The Steel Prince. My mangas we have My Hero Academia which I haven't read yet. The Promised Neverland which I loved but it's so hard to find the rest of the volumes. This is actually a horror manga which I wasn't aware of diving in and it really did creep me out but very intrigued to carry on with the series as I mentioned. I just need to find the rest of the books. Moriarty is one that I haven't read yet but I have read Spy Family. Again I have been looking for the next few volumes but I haven't been able to get my hands on them. I have seen that there's a set on Books to Dull though so I might have to buy that. Then we have some Junji Ito books which again I'm desperate to read but I think that they're gonna creep me out so much so I have been putting them off. Over here we have Full Metal Alchemist in the Full Metal Editions. This is gorgeous and when I saw it in Forbidden Planet I had to pick it up. Don't really know too much about the story of it but I've heard such amazing things about it and yeah I love this cover so much especially the foiling. I think it just adds that something extra to it so yeah I'm obsessed with that one. We then have books that aren't mangas here but they are the Disney Dream Guides by Adam Hatton who is a Disney YouTuber. They essentially give you a whole ton of information about planning a trip to Walt Disney World or to go on the Disney Cruise Line which I don't think I'm gonna be doing for a while but it's nice to have them and Adam has worked there and has been on a few trips there himself so I trust his recommendations completely and then the last book I have on here is Witchy by Ariel Summit Riez. I read this one I wasn't the biggest fan so I'm not sure whether I will keep this one or not. Moving down here we have some more books as you can see we have some of the books from my these books will self-destruct in 12 months video which I desperately need to read because I think it's been about 10 months since I filmed that and I haven't read a single one so it's not going well you guys and then in front of them I have my arc copies which are advanced reader copies meaning that I received a copy of the book before it was released in order to read it and review and then down at the bottom here we have all of my book sleeves. We also have two more books from the these books will self-destruct pile but they didn't fit there and we have my Sarah J Mass colouring books there as well just because I didn't really have anywhere else to keep them. And there we have it guys that was my bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoyed it. I personally love watching bookshelf tours. I find it so interesting to see how people organise their books and what 
what special editions they have and things like that so I hope you've had a nice little insight into the types of books that I like to read, the special editions that I own and my organisation process as well. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and comment some book emojis down below. Those are of course going to be the most fitting emoji for this video and I know I say it all the time but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me so if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say but you would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and do that now. As well as that please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it for me today guys, thank you so so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!